So you're looking for some Florida native plant landscaping ideas. Well, you're in the right spot because we just took this spot from invasive and blah to totally native. And this, this is the finale. Eight weeks after all the installations, we've covered all the plants. Let's see how it went. Let's talk about what went well, what didn't, what we do differently, and just kind of what happened along the way. Today on Wild Florida, we're talking about phase one of the Florida native plant landscaping. So it is eight weeks later. So if you remember, we started and this was an invasive snake plant. It was just kind of bleh looking, just was not that great. And now it is totally native and I am so happy with it. I just, it's so pretty. I enjoy every day when, right before I go to work, I will just like walk past it just because I was just so curious about what's happening and there's just always something happening. So I am so happy with this. And you know what? I am so happy that so many of you all wanted to join on this journey. It just gets me so excited on a whole nother level that there's all these people who one are supportive of Florida native plants and our wildlife and then there's a whole bunch of new people who like you're just getting into native plants or you're just looking for landscaping ideas and now you're inspired to put some more native plants in it so I just like all around this whole series just good things projects great y'all are great I'm just excited so let's talk about some stuff because one, some of y'all are like, that wasn't there. It was over there. What happened? And some of the plants are in different spots than I remember. What happened? So let's get into it. So let's talk about what happened over the eight weeks, why some things have changed, what was kind of the thought process, what went well, what were some lessons learned, right? Just what would I do differently? Um, and what are some of your thoughts? Oh, oh, wildlife everywhere, I love it. first remember there were four goals for this project number one had to do with shade right creating shade on this wall now is there shade more than there was before not yet but I have high confidence because all the plants are doing great so I have every bit of confidence that we're gonna fill in and really start shading this wall behind me so more to come and yes we will do a check-in months and months from now so we can see that number two goal was to add native plants so did we do that yeah they're all native I mean we went through that right so but from I mean but what was really cool is I got to add some plants that I one didn't have in my yard anywhere else plants that I wanted to add for a long time um, and it just was kind of a reason to go add them so we put in of course our native beauty berry our tropical sage we had our pink swamp milkweed uh, native pineland lantana scorpion tails hiding around me and of course blanket flowers just peeking up over here so all native plants, super excited. We won't talk about that one yet, we'll talk about that. And actually, y'all might not have even realized, even from the beginning of the series, there was another native plant in the shots, but I just never really talked about it. And it's this one right over here. There's a pot that was sitting in front of everything, and you may have noticed some green, and that is Biden's Alba. Yes, one of the most, uh, the third most common sources of nectar and pollen for bees and butterflies in our state, and wasps too, I guess is Biden's Alba. And yes, it was sitting in that pot the whole time. I didn't talk about it, I didn't highlight it because it wasn't really meant to be part of the aesthetic, but it's gonna stay there. So yes, there's an additional native plant in this area. So if you remember, our third goal that we wanted to do was create habitat and did we? Right? So we wanted to create some edible plants for our wildlife, whether it was for our birds, our butterflies, our bees, wasps, ladybugs, you know, whoever, just all of them, us, it's all good. Create some shelter for them um, and all good things like that. So I think this was very successful. And how do I know that? One, every morning when I walk out, there is usually one to two birds hanging out back here. So I know they're getting some food. Caterpillars, different types of caterpillars hanging out in here. Um, we've had, I've got bees coming in now, wasps coming in, ladybugs coming in. So 
We're just already eight weeks in. There's so much wildlife coming in, which is super exciting. I'm very excited. So let's talk a little bit about, right? So Beauty Berry, we got our edible food for us. And um, I tried one of the little Beauty Berries because it turned purple, so super excited. And I tried it and it still tasted blech. But here's the thing, one, y'all who have Beauty Berries, thank you for creating the, the excitement for the future because y'all were like no, no no they do taste good so I know it's probably a couple things one I know that those were not fully ripe yet so two I just transplanted those so and number three I even know with my mulberry tree which not native um, it took over a year for them to really taste good even though they did produce fruit because the plant was more it was prioritizing growing over making tasty food so I'm cool with it I'm we're we're in a long-term relationship this beauty berry so I'm cool if it's not ready to be tasty yet um, but I love the fact that the birds are already hanging out we've gotten more and more birds in this area even my neighbors commenting and he was even just commenting today he's like he's getting more butterflies in his backyard since I've done this project so and that's really exciting it's like really exciting I think good things for Florida's wildlife and it feels like if you want to do something better for the wildlife like you need to buy like acres of land and you like me may not have just like money to buy acres and acres of land right and so it can feel like maybe I can't make that much of a difference but this space is literally 4 by 10 it is 40 square feet it's not very big and to see the amount of change which is 40 square feet 4 by 10 feet it's just, I think it just shows if you have a small space, every little bit counts. Every potted plant, every four by four, two by two, one by one, any little bit you can give to a native plant that helps the environment, right? It helps wildlife. It's a host plant. It provides nectar and food. It provides berries and seeds. Like it does make a difference. It really does. It does not take a lot for wildlife to respond. So just you know if you had a question in your mind that you needed to go buy like seven acres of land you don't really just a small spot it's 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 cool how much how much is happening with so little so let me just say that very cool and then remember goal four was all about removing invasive plants we got rid of that snake tongue and you know what i want to pat myself on the back i feel pretty proud of myself because there was a lot of snake tongue and it was like a lot of snake tongue <laughs> oh man and I have not really, other than I think one little spot, had any regrowth. So this area, I, it's pretty deemed removal of invasive. Now, now, were we successful with removing all invasive plants from the area when I was going through those videos? No, we were not. No, we were not. Which is why things got rearranged again because after I got done filming all that, you know, I love learning about native plants and I was reading an article and it was talking about, you know, native plants that you can replace from like common invasives. And I was like, you know what? I think I've read this article before. I'm gonna read it again. And I started reading it and I went, oh, oh, I did not remove all the invasives from the area. So I had to, I had to, I had to buy more plants. That's what I told my husband. <laughs> So we went into a phase two, which, hey, stick around for that. There's a whole nother phase two with more native plants. And yes, it's gonna be super fun. And that's where this plant came in because I took out what was invasive honeysuckle and replaced it with a native vining plant. And then now let's talk about, but everything's kind of in a different spot, so why? So what happened over time after we filmed the beginning parts. So the first thing that happened was I noticed 
that our sprinkler system really didn't hit this side of the area very well. So that was a lesson learned. Check your sprinkler systems. Now, did it change the fact that I was gonna use this? No, it just, it was just something we had to work on early on. The second thing was that as I started to get some of these videos out, um, y'all pointed out some things that like maybe I should have considered and done differently, which one, never feel bad about doing that. I honestly, I do not, if you're coming from a good place, I'm gonna receive it in a good place, right? So um, I really appreciate Jan. Hey Jan, she's in a lot of the native gardening groups. Um, she was like, you know, the beauty berries, I think you're gonna like them a little bit better away from the wall. They're probably gonna be a little bit happier. And she said that and it like stuck in my head. Cause at first I was like, no, I think it's gonna be okay. But deep down I had already been thinking like, maybe these are a bit close. And then like for two weeks, I just heard it in my head over and over again. I was like, you know what, you know what? I'm doing this phase two, I'm moving them. I'm moving them because once I took out this honeysuckle, right, which was creating kind of more of an asymmetric look, which I'm cool with asymmetry. I'm totally cool with it. I was like, you know what? I have the opportunity to make the beauty berries more symmetric on this window behind me. So I did. I not only moved the beauty berries, both of them slightly, I moved both of them further away from the wall. So now instead of being about a foot from the wall, they're about two feet from the wall. Ideally with plants this big, you probably want to be closer to four feet, but four feet's where the sidewalk starts. So I mean, it is what it is. But I wanted to allow them so that as I kind of train them into trees over time, that, and then I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to make this a thing, is that they have enough equal weight distribution so they're not gonna topple over at any point. Though I think their root systems are gonna be pretty good. Okay, we're about four weeks since I planted this, and as you can probably tell, phase two, which you're gonna to get to see, happened. But here's the thing. Now that I've already done phase two and this is all looking super awesome, I think the logical thing is, is that and that need to flip. So I'm going to take the beauty berry, put it where the morning glory is and the morning glory where the beauty berry is. That way we got space symmetric with the beauty berry and the beauty berry. And with the TP trellis only getting so high, we won't totally block the light coming in that window. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I just rearranged things. So I moved the beauty berry with the morning glory. Then, you know, when I was thinking about this after I did the whole project, I thought maybe I put the beauty berries a little too close to the wall. And you know what, Jan, I think part of Pinellas, Pinellas' Florida Native Plant Society was like maybe a little too close. So I moved this about six inches to a foot further away from the wall, which then made me move this one six inches to a foot further away from the wall. And then I tried to make them more symmetric with where they were at in these walls. And then because I was doing that, I had to go move one of the tropical sages over here. So now we've got two tropical sages over here, two milkweeds. Still has this asymmetric on the ground cover, but I'm cool with that because I wanted to create some diversity and I may go add some different things in over time. But overall, I'm much happier with this look. And I think the way that morning glory is just sitting in the middle, that's gonna be really nice. So I think this is good. And let me say, champs the beauty berries, champs. They've been in the ground for four weeks and then I went and moved them and you know, they looked a little not so happy for like a week, but they bounce back pretty fast. So yay for that. Oh, and speaking of moving plants around and transplanting them, I know the question came up, um, one, they were like, you should be wearing gloves. Yes, wear gloves, be safe, don't be bad like me. I say wear gloves and sometimes I'm bad because I'm filming for a long time and then I go and do the work immediately and I get tired and I just don't think of things. I also didn't tease out the roots, so bad me. I was bad. Um, so do that, don't be like me, be good. Tease out roots. Um, so besides moving the beauty berries, that I did move one of the tropical sages. So now that we got more of a symmetric also with like milkweed and then sage. So the, the high plants are gonna be more symmetric, the low ones are not. Oh, and then the question came up, did I water the plants right afterwards? Yes, I always do, I don't film it because so not, one, it's hot, it's like July, June, July when I was doing all this. It's August now, so it was just hot and humid and like, so I, yes, I always water the plants after I put them in the ground. So just in case you guys were wondering if I do that or you're new and you didn't know you should do that, do that. You do water your plants as soon as you put them in. And you wanna give them a nice, good drink, like a really deep drink. Um, so I did water them, plus we were in the middle of rainy season, so they did get rained on too. So they were, they got lots of water, they're, they're good. They're happy. So the another 
other thing you might be wondering is how long till I got caterpillars on my milkweed. So one, when I bought one of them, I had them caterpillars. So immediately is the answer. But honestly, it didn't take very long. Um, within a week or two after getting them in the ground, I already saw some monarch caterpillars on there. We've not gotten any soldier or queen. I have never seen those butterflies nor those caterpillars on my milkweed. Now, if you were to plant milkweed, you may not get them right away. It really depends if you have the butterfly in the area. You can have a host plant and if nothing's coming through your area, it's just, it's just gonna be there. But we already had monarchs in the area. I already have milkweed in the backyard, um, some other white and pink native swamp milkweed. So it didn't take too long and we got one grouping of caterpillars and now we're on a whole nother grouping. There's like a ton and they're eating the flowers, <gasps> which my first round of native milkweed flowers. I'm so excited. It's my first time getting them and now the caterpillars are eating them, which is cool, but I'd never gotten those before. So they honestly just opened up just a few days before I'm filming this. So that was really exciting too. Very excited about that. So just FYI, even if you've got some buds, it took a good, so from like basically seven weeks from the time we planted them to flower, yeah, about seven to eight weeks. Oh, and when it comes to flowering, most of the plants that have flowers on them, you know, we lost the flowers, but about two to three weeks, almost everything put new flowers on, new growth. And I think that's a good way you can know that your plants are doing well is if are they putting on new growth if they're putting on new growth they feel com they feel like they got the resources to go do it so new growth is a very good sign that the plants are healthy and within two to three weeks I saw new leaves on everything the last plant I think I saw new leaves on was the pineland lantana which isn't as surprising because it's a very it's like you got these softer leaves the softer leaves came on a lot faster ones that have like harder leaves or hardier take a little bit longer so that was one of the things I noticed. But really within two to three weeks, everything had new growth. And within three to four weeks, new flowers were coming in. These guys were coming in. Lots of blanket flower blanketing. Got lots of new flowers. So what went well? Let's talk about what went well. Overall, I'm happy with all my plant choices. I love all these plants. I'm super excited about all these plants. I love how they've all grown in just eight weeks. I'm very excited to keep seeing them fill in the area. Um, I think the one plant that I might have done differently is the sage. I wish I would have maybe done the red one, which I do have the red in another part of my yard, so I think over time I might take that out. And I really think the reason is, is because since this fall is like this light gray, the flowers just really don't stick out very much. Um, but maybe once there's more green behind it, I'll like it more. I don't know. I'm not gonna kill it anytime soon. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. So that's cool. Uh, so I think overall, we've met our goals. So I'm happy. I think overall, everything went well. The things that I would think I would do differently, besides putting in the red tropical sage, I would consider putting in the ground covers further back because this only gets light from the east and when the sun is up in the high sky the plants all are coming towards this way and they want to grow that way they're not growing towards the wall so by putting the plants closer not the beauty berry the big ones but the ground covers i think that would have been more beneficial because they would be covering the ground better instead of starting to try to be on the sidewalk more than the other way i'm hoping they'll still fill in so that's kind of a more to come but that would be one thing I would have done differently going forward. So what didn't go well? Overall, I think this project went well. So everything I say here is just like little tweaks. I think we already talked a little bit about some of the spacing on the beauty berries, missing an invasive, um, but you know what? Bad thing turned into a good thing, so I'm cool with it. It was all a learning thing. So I really, there's not much that went bad. Oh, we did lose out one caterpillar to a wasp of nature, but that was a little sad. Yeah, yeah. No bad, just generally good.
love this, like I love this project. I love the look of it. I love the wildlife we're getting. I'm excited for where it's going. I love how people responded to it and it got other people really excited about planting native plants. So just from like overall, like, yes, this is like A plus win-win, check, check. Yes, I just love it. I'm happy. And so we mentioned the invasive and really this has led into a whole phase two project. Yay! I know. Now this one is not totally native. It is a Florida friendly landscaping phase two project. It's going to be this area. It's expanding the area. The reason it's going to be Florida friendly is I'm going to leave a couple exotics, but I'm adding. I'm adding more natives and guess what? They're all vines. So if you want to make sure you don't miss it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. New videos each week on Friday and sometimes a bonus on Sunday. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye guys!